What's going on guys? Uh, Danny here and uh, just making a video just kind of like because uh, some people some people have asked me the question you know like what exactly is your editing process like I had a guy message me a while back who was like I want to get into album reviews what do I need in order to do that so I figured you know what why not I just I added a few things to help me out and just kind of give an overview of my workstation as it is, and I may or may not have already started drinking, so if this video pops up on YouTube, I was probably drinking. So, let's go ahead and just uh, go on and see what we've got here. First off, i got my laptop here. Got ourselves some rye whiskey over here, which has been freshly poured with some caffeine-free Coke Zero. And this is, which you can't really see too well. I'm going to up the brightness probably in post. But, uh... Overall, I got a nice little desk set up here. You know, you got, you know, Robocop over here. You got uh, the goof that I constructed. I put up, I think, I think I put up a video of that um, not too long ago. It was like a collection of different points which I had started uh, started piecing it together in one of those high grade model kits that uh, Bandai put out. You know, you've got a uh, I got my TV over here, which I use. You know, Destiny's loaded up right now, not doing too well because of the uh, the drinking. But you got well, you can't really see it too well. And there's a battery warning indicator, and that is a Hopog HD PVR2. And yes, unlike what most people say, it does record in 60 frames per second. So it does. This little thing on my wrist, say uh, up band. My jawbone because I've been losing weight. Lost uh, 22 pounds so far, and this little thing is definitely helping me out. Keep track of what I'm eating, how much physical activity I've got. That's great. So let's see what else do we got over here. Let me actually sit down here. Uh, so giant stack of caffeine-free Coke Zero, and there's a box down here on the floor. This big old blue box is a PS2 that for the past see what is it October 10th for a week and a half and I got a really great story about this I'm surprised I haven't told it to you guys yet um, I've been fumigating this PS2 I had a I had to get a PS2 because I'm starting to do a Resident Evil retrospective month and uh, you know Resident Evil 4 Code Veronica X the Outbreak games stuff like that they're on PS2 I didn't have one anymore I didn't have a PS1 either, so I go out, uh, I go to a pawn, I start calling around to pawn shops trying to find out, you know, where can I find a PlayStation 2? And one pawn shop had one. Now this pawn shop is not exactly in a, in a very good neighborhood. Um, it's actually a place where people frequently get assaulted uh, shot, hit by cars all the damn time, and uh, walk up and down it on a frequent basis. Um, but anyway, this thing smelled like cigarette smoke like you wouldn't believe. I'm an asthmatic. Cigarette smoke is like the one of the worst things that I can breathe. I mean, that, that stuff can kill me in minutes, depending on how much there is in a given area. So I had... Uh, I had Opened it up, made sure that it worked, popped in a PS2 game that I had bought with it, and uh, read PS2 games fine. I'm like, okay, I'm going to fumigate this. So I put it, put it in a box for three days, dryer sheets, stuff like that. Good recommendation from my mom, who uh, I had asked her, I was like, hey, how do you get rid of cigarette smoke from electronics? Dryer sheets everywhere. So now it smells a lot like gain. Um, pulled it out a few days after that, uh, running it for a little while. I'm guessing the cigarette smoke was still in the fans. So, um, the system itself didn't smell like smoke, none of the accessories, anything like that. So, it's just been in there fumigating again. And I'm probably not going to take it out of the box until I'm ready to do Code Veronica X. But here's the real kicker. When I took it out of the box after that first initial fumigation, I put in my copy of Resident Evil Director's... Dire well, no, Resident Evil 2 because I had just purchased a brand new copy of 2. Well, I shouldn't say brand new. I purchased a copy of 2 because I had misplaced mine. And uh, 
It didn't do any permanent damage to the disc, uh, but it would not read the PS1 disc, and I could hear the laser or the how, whatever you want to call it on the inside of the PlayStation 2. It was making a strange noise. I open it up, and uh, it's extremely superficial, but it started to make a ring in the disc. And I've heard problems about this with a slim PS2 before. Um, so I immediately started flipping out, and I'm like, okay, well, now i got to make sure all my PS2 games work. It reads PS2 games fine. I'm not exactly sure what the deal is. It just won't read PS1 games. So naturally, you can probably tell where this is going. I don't have a PS1. I gotta go find a PS1 to start recording. Find a PS1 for 12 bucks. Uh, and this is at a pawn shop that was uh, was not in a bad neighborhood. In fact, it was in the exact opposite. 12 bucks, PS1, great shape, came with a DualShock controller, all the necessary cables. Um, only real problem with it was the, uh, which, actually it's down here in the floor. Um, yeah. It's one of the original PSXs here. The nice little open tab. The problem with that is that uh, when you hit the open button, um, the button kind of sticks a little bit. Um, not really that big of a deal. Uh, the only thing I have to do is that I have to double tap it shut. And it shuts. Other than that, it's a perfectly working PSX. So, no qualms there, and it's been a joy to record. Uh, with uh, recorded Resident Evil Director's Cut through it so far, and I've started editing that, by the way. Um, you know, I'm, it's, it's just taking a very long time because I want to make these videos unique, and I want to do it right. I have a way that I want to do this, and I may not be able to fully realize the way I want to do it because I'm working on very limited equipment here. Hell, I use a 15 megapixel 1080p camera to film my videos with a nice condenser mic, but, you know, I wish I had a better camera. Um, so, I'm doing what I can. Uh, right now, it's in the stages of me doing voiceover for game footage, uh, kind of explaining what's going on, but all the stuff that has me sitting in this chair right now, at my new desk, is filmed and ready to go. Um, other than that, Something that I've been wanting to bring up with um, subscribers for quite some time, and this goes for not only uh, the gaming channel, Phantasm Mask, and uh, Metal Couch TV, where I review metal albums, uh, which, if you're not subscribed to that, what are you doing? I mean, oh, God, there's so many good metal albums out there that I've listened to and reviewed, and some pretty bad ones. Of course, you could go over there and subscribe if you are into that kind of thing. Um... I've been tinkering around with this for a while, and I've been asking some of my longtime subscribers, um, if I made a Patreon, what would you guys like to see me do as, like, a benefits thing? You know, like, what, what would you, what kind of exclusive content would you want to see? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to wind up be making one anyway, and uh, it's not for me to really make money off of my videos. It's actually to kind of balance out the cost of doing it. Um, I love making videos, gaming, metal reviews, whatever. It's a great hobby of mine. But some of the, sometimes when it takes a while for me to put up a video, it's usually due to the fact that, you know, I gotta pay rent. Um, I'm saving up to get a vehicle right now. Um, saving up to get a motorcycle, to be more specific. Um, you know, and I have other things that pop up every now and then, like the phone I'm recording on has a nice big crack through the screen, and I haven't fixed it. Um, it's not to pay for any of that. It's to pay for things like, you know, say that I wanted to do a Metal Gear retrospective in December. I'm not saying I'm going to. I would have to completely get all the Metal Gear games because I don't own any of the Metal Gear games anymore. It would be for something like that, and basically maintenance costs for whatever equipment I may have. Um, it's not something that I wanted to profit off of, um, but the only way that I could really describe Patreon is uh, with in regards to exclusive content. Like I, I toyed with the fact of having one episode of the Resident Evil Retrospective be a Patreon member-only episode to entice people to subscribe. 
Now, this episode is not going to be uh, one of the main series of games because I feel that would be t that would be unfair. Um, I actually thought about doing the spinoff video, or at least one of the spinoff videos, as part of the Patreon exclusive video series. And for the metal side of things, uh, with the money that I would get from Patreon, is that I would have a monthly raffle uh, where Patreon people who paid into the Patreon membership, who subscribe to it, doesn't matter what amount it is, um, would be entered in to win a, like a CD of the month, if you will, and I would send it to them. It'd be all, kind of like an album of the month thing, like my recommendation recommendation of metal to a fan who is loyal enough to, on a monthly basis, donate a sum of money if they want, um, whether it be a dollar, five dollars, or it doesn't matter. Just something for me to say, hey, you know, you want to support me on Patreon. I'm going to give back. So having something like a monthly album uh, raffle would be great. Um, I've been asking other subscribers about it, you know, what would they like to see. And the album raffle idea seems to be pretty popular. So, uh, but that's for that channel. I'm not exactly sure what I could do with the gaming channel as video games are much more expensive. Um, you know, they go anywhere from $60 to, in, in like, limited editions, go even for even more than that. So I would have to get a little bit more creative with a gaming raffle if I were to even do a raffle for my gaming channel. So if you have any ideas, just leave it down in the uh, comment section below. But uh, this, this is basically turned into an update video, so... Um, that's about all I have. Uh, I'm just going to finish off my night. It's like 3 in the morning. I worked a 9-hour shift today, and after I work a very hard day of work and a day that I, I did not like today at all, I like to pour myself a glass of whiskey and um, sit back and enjoy myself. Resident Evil Retrospective first episode is coming. Just give me time. I've been bumped up to full time now, so i got a little bit less time to film and do VO work. I'm working on it, and it's coming. Even if I have to go into November, I'll do it. I want to get this entire retrospective done because I know there are a few people out there, not many, not as many as some other people on YouTube, but my subscribers, they they need something like this. They need a big piece of content like this. I, I haven't done a project like this in a very long time, and I'm super happy to be doing it. It's kind of rekindled my joy of filmmaking and editing again. So thank you guys for all your continuing support. Um, I will definitely post a video once the Patreon's all finalized. I just got to deal with, uh, you know, information, payment information, and I got to make a video for it. So, um, Retrospective Part 1 is coming very soon, within the next few days. Thank you guys for all your continued support. Um, I can't really thank you enough. So, I'm going to probably turn Destiny off now, uh, finish this video here on my laptop, and hit the sack. So... Thanks for watching, even if this was a little bit of a drunken ramble. Talk to you guys later.